Hi everyone, it's Julie Ann here from Miss Ink Stamps and welcome back. I'm super excited to announce that I'm gonna be joining their design team as a guest designer for the next couple of months. And for my first card, I really wanted to use an older stamp set that most of you probably already have, and I'm going to be giving it a new meaning. I really love using stamps that I already have in my collection and using them for multiple occasions in order to get the most out of them. And that's what I'm gonna be doing here today. I'm going to be taking an older stamp set and I'm going to be creating a Christmas coffee inspired card. So I started out by stamping two of the coffee cup images as well as both of the floral images that are both a part of the Brew Tifo stamp set. And I stamped each one of those images using some Memento Tuxedo Black ink onto a piece of Expressit Blending cardstock. This is the ink and cardstock that I personally love using when it comes to Copic coloring. And as most of you probably already know, I do do a lot of Copic coloring for sure. Once I have each of these images stamped out, I'm gonna start off my coloring and I'm gonna start working on the berries first. Since this is going to be a Christmas inspired card, I'm gonna be coloring in those berries to look as though they are cranberries. Personally, when I am decorating my house for Christmas, I love having cranberries throughout my house, including my table decor and even my tree. So that's what I was really going for for my card today. Once I have colored in all of those berries, I'm then gonna start working on coloring in the coffee cup that has the polka dots. I am gonna be using the same red color combination for both. And as I am coloring, I do try to make sure that I have the marker caps off to the side of the screen so that you can follow along with the colors that I'm using. But I will also have them listed down at the bottom because sometimes the marker caps can get a little blurry and hard to read. For both the berries and the cup, I have started out by coloring my darkest color first, which is gonna be R39. And then I've added in both of my medium shades, which is R29 and R27. And then finally, I'll come in blending all of those colors together with my lightest shade of R24. For my second coffee cup, I really wanted to add some detail to it. So I'm going to be adding some lines to make it look as though there are stripes on my cup. And I'll be starting out by creating those lines using a pencil. And then I'll go over them using a Memento Tuxedo Black Marker, which is completely Copic Marker safe as well. I'm then gonna start working on coloring in the cup. And for the stripes, I use the same red markers as I used before, but for the cup itself, I'm going to be using a green color combination that I really thought would match my background that we will get to in just a second. But the colors I'm gonna be using will be G29 as my darkest shade, G28 as my medium, and finally, I'll be using G19 as my lightest color to blend them all together. Once I have all of my images colored in, I'm then gonna start working on fussy cutting them all out. I do think as of right now, Miss Ink Stamp doesn't offer coordinating dies, but that's perfectly okay. You can definitely fussy cut your images out like I am here, or if you do have a scanning cut machine, that will work as well. But these images were very simple to cut out. I'm just gonna use a pair of scissors to cut around each one of those images, leaving that nice white border that we all love. And then for the handle for both of my coffee cups, I will end up using a craft knife. I'm now gonna start out by creating my ink blended background. And for that, I'm gonna be using my Distress Inks in the colors Evergreen Bow, Lucky Clover, Pine Needles, and finally some Black Soot. I'm gonna start out with my lightest ink color, which is gonna be that Evergreen Bow. And I'm going to be adding that color to just the center of my Distress Watercolor cardstock that I have already trimmed down to A2 size. I'm then gonna be coming in with Lucky Clover, and I'm going to be adding that color to the edges of my background panel blending it in towards the center. And then to darken those edges, I'm going to be using pine needles. And I'm really gonna be focusing that color just on the edges of my background panel. And then finally, to even darken those edges even more, I am gonna be coming in with black soot. And I'm going to be adding that color around each one of my edges. Now, in order to get a really nice blend throughout my background, I'm gonna come back in with pine needles and I'm gonna blend those edges together. And then finally, I will come back in with Lucky Clover and I'm gonna blend all of those colors together to get a really nice, even blend throughout my entire background. Now, in order to add some texture and some sparkle to my background, I'm gonna be splattering some Perfect Pearls in the color gold throughout my background. And I'm just gonna be adding those Perfect Pearls directly to my work surface. 
and then I'm going to mix in a bit of water before splattering it on my background using a paintbrush. Now I do have my panel inside of my splat box to hopefully contain most of the splatter, but honestly, I still do get it everywhere. I just end up cleaning up my work surface after I'm done. If you don't have a splat box, an old shoe box, or maybe even a box that you've received some crafty goodies in will work just as well. I think I ended up getting this splat box on Amazon for about $4, so that's why I have this. So once I'm done with that, I'm just gonna set my background off to the side to dry, and then I'm gonna start working on assembling the rest of my card together. Now in order to separate my images from my background, I'm going to be using the Honey Bee Holiday Traditions paper pad, and I'm gonna use a sheet of that brown pattern paper that you see here, and I'm just going to be trimming that down into a small strip, I really thought that it would be a nice subtle pattern for my card. I'm also gonna trim down a even smaller strip of gold glitter card stock. And then I'm going to start adhering everything down to my card. I'm gonna start off by adhering that gold strip first, directly down to my ink blended background using some liquid adhesive. And I'm just gonna line that up using my grid mat. Once I have that adhered, I'm then going to adhere the strip of pattern paper down as well, kind of overlapping that onto the glitter card stock. And once I have both of those adhered, I'm then gonna start working on adhering both of my floral images as well as my coffee cups. So once I've decided where I want my images to be on my card, I'm gonna actually cut that large floral image into two pieces. Since most of the image was gonna end up being behind my coffee cups, I really wanted it to look as though some of the berries and leaves were really popping up from behind my coffee cups as well. I'm gonna end up adhering that large floral image down first and then I'm going to adhere the small floral to the left of my card. And once I know exactly where I want that green coffee cup to be, I'm then going to adhere that small piece that I cut as well. Now to make sure that I adhere the coffee cup and berries down where I have them right now, I'm gonna temporarily adhere them together using some washi tape. And then I'm just gonna flip those over and add some liquid adhesive before adhering them down to my card. For the red coffee cup, I'm going to adhere that to my background using some foam adhesive to give my card that little bit of added dimension. And once I have everything adhered, I really felt as though there was something really missing in that area right underneath that green coffee cup. So I pulled back out my stamp set and I stamped and masked a bunch of those coffee beans that are included in this stamp. And I'm going to be adhering that down to my card as well using some more of that liquid adhesive. I really wanted to have those berries look really shiny like it would if they were Christmas decorations. So I'm going to be adding some glossy accents and I'm gonna put that all over each one of those berry images. This is such an easy thing to do and it's really such a nice added detail that can bring your card to another level if it's something that you're wanting to do. Once I let those glossy accents dry, finally to finish off my card, I did stamp and white heat emboss a Merry Christmas sentiment that I had in one of the many Christmas stamp sets that I already have. So any Christmas sentiment that you have will work for this. And I did heat emboss that onto some red color cardstock. I'm then going to adhere that sentiment down towards the bottom right of my card. And then to add some additional sparkle to this card, I'm going to be adhering a few gold confetti mix pieces throughout my background. And once I have each one of those adhered, that's gonna complete my Christmas coffee card. I really hope that you all enjoyed this card. And if you have this stamp set or something similar, I hope that it will inspire you to stretch your stamps for multiple occasions. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe for even more card making ideas. And if you're interested in any of the supplies I used today, they will all be listed and linked down below in the description box. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time and happy crafting.